According to experts at the Office for National Statistics, mental health and long COVID, as well as back and neck pains due to working from home, are partly responsible for the rise in numbers. What's the solution for Sick Note Britain? Joining us now for his take on this is Tony Wilson, Director of the Institute for Employment Studies. So let's look at these figures. 5,000 people a day are claiming sickness benefit. We're up uh, 440,000 since the pandemic. So how do you explain this? <laughs> Well, it's a good question. And, and as you say, this is becoming a growing problem and it's become, it's been really brought into sharp relief by, um, by this week's figures. So there's a few things happening. One is that actually this was rising before the pandemic and we've had quite high rates of long-term ill health for quite some time. As, as you'll remember, um, Esther, from when you were, when you, when you were in, in the Department for Work and Pensions as well, this has been a perennial issue they've grappled with. Since the pandemic though, we have seen really significant rises and our analysis suggests this is primarily people who've been out of work already and their health is either deteriorating further or they're people who weren't previously reporting being out for ill health and are subsequently now saying they have got long-term health conditions. So it looks like it's an issue around longer-term worklessness. There's definitely some signs that people are leaving work as well, I mean, as they always have been, and there's some signs that might be related to long COVID. But the, the point the ONS make, as, as you say, is this is the same perennial issues. It's about musculoskeletal pain, lower back pain, for example. It's about poor mental health and often having multiple conditions. And this, this prevent people feeling like this prevents them from coming back to work. So yeah, a, a set of complex issues. It's not all people leaving work. It's a lot of people who are out of work getting, getting further away from the jobs market. And obviously when I was Secretary of State, we used to do lots of studies on actually staying in work is good for your health for one reason or other, whether it was yeah. walking around, whether it was connecting with people, whether it was having a vision of what you wanted to do, hopes and dreams, etc. So it was important. So for people being off work for two years, it has had mm. a devastating impact on them. Yeah, Tony, I, I just wanted to, um, uh, to ask, I mean, are the, do you think all these people are genuinely ill and off sick for legitimate reasons. I mean, we talk here about bad backs. I mean, that was, I mean, that was the butt of every comedian's joke, that somebody was off work for a bad back. It was one of those things that nobody yeah. could say. Whether it, mental health is now, uh, sort of people say, well, mental health's now the new bad back, you know, that nobody can really yeah. uh, de deny it. So what, clearly there are some people who are genuinely off sick, but do you think um, in these figures there are a lot of malingerers who are just using it as an excuse to not work? Well, look, I, th I think it's a, I think it's a fair question. I think it's a really legitimate question. I think I'll separate out two things though. There's, there's people who are, who might have sickness absence while at work. And then there's people who've reached this point that the figures we're talking about. It's people who've now become economically inactive. So they've left work entirely. They're not looking for work. They're not available for work. Um, when people are off, off work sick, you know, there does tend to be a response, which is, well, we have to manage the absence. You know, we have to try and get people back. And actually, you know, sickness absence rates from work have fallen quite a lot over the years. In the 1990s, it averaged about seven or eight days a year. On average now it's about three or four um, and actually some of the issues now are that people are working when they're not well the presenteeism actually can have bigger impacts on productivity can make other people ill it, you know it can affect them um, how how firms operate and so on so i think for every time there might be you know somebody isn't as ill as they say they are there'll be people who are working when they are ill often managers often like no, people in health services people who don't want to let their customers or their or their clients or their patients their colleagues down um the other side of this, though, is that job quality really does matter. So people who've got good, this is a really interesting finding, older people with good self-reported health, but poor job quality, who aren't happy in their work, are six times more likely to leave work because of ill health than people who are satisfied in their jobs. And now that's not to say that they're not really ill, but these, these kind of psychosocial, it's, a, well, it's not a particularly technical term, but, you know, these environmental and social factors yeah. that can affect how we feel, you know, can also lead to people being yeah, absent. I, in fact, we sometimes focus a bit too much on the symptoms rather than how do we actually make people well at work? How do we help yeah, people be and healthy I think, at work? And a business should look at that. If they've got high turnover of staff and high absenteeism, they should look at that because that's uh, costing them a lot of money there. But this issue of people not in work, of people falling out of work, um, it has knock-on effects on other things. To see now that 20% of our workforce were foreign-born, this is all now linking into the immigration figures. 1.1 million job vacancies, and now we're going to get them from abroad. Surely that's wrong, Tony. Well, you know, when I was listening before I came on, I think you talked about three things, and all of them I thought these were all related. <laughs> I've got something to say on all this, but... Um, High levels of immigration, work-related immigration, 
Um, pressures on the NHS, which we were talking about before, before then, doctors and changing do access to doctor's surgeries and automatic, um, artificial intelligence, you know, driving productivity, driving job destruction, but also helping us be more, you know, have, have better quality jobs, if you like. They're all related. And so I think a lot of firms are now seeing pressures on their workforce and these broader technological pressures as well. We haven't seen for for decades, actually. The, what, the labour force has grown since the 1990s continually through thick and thin. It's growing because people have been staying in work longer as we get older. More women are staying in work. We're having smaller families. We're coming back to work sooner. It's growing because, um, because of higher migration, definitely because of higher migration. And a lot of these are going into reverse now. Employment for older people is falling. We've got fewer young people now, and young people are staying in education longer. We've got lower migration. Firms are going to face a permanently smaller workforce over the next decade. There's a million more people in their 50s than there are in their 40s. They'll all be moving into their 60s, and you know we'll be getting older and older. And that's a great thing we should celebrate, but it does mean we're going to have to work differently. And how we can help people to stay in work, how we can make work more flexible, more supportive, these things are easy to say, they're really hard to do, but ha but that is going to be fundamental to, to the recovery. And I do worry, I do understand the question on people really ill. My fear is actually that by firms focusing on this, absence management, you've got to be in work. If you spend more than five days out of work, you know, you're, you're going to you, you risk losing your pay. That, that could just make some of this worse. It could push people further away. So we've got to think, I think, think a bit differently about some of this. Tony Wilson, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to join us this morning. We appreciate your insight.